we, we did save and we're okay with save uh, we're all right with the idea that uh, we have a save method and it's the job of the objects themselves to do the save uh, and we don't like hiding errors we like the idea of um, uh, throwing exceptions and blowing things away when bad things happen and we just finished at a really nice time we sort of said okay uh, this is my safe behavior and that's what it prints five rob hold ten now there's nothing that tells the reader of this file that's the account number that's the account name that's the address and that's the balance um, we just have to make sure where we read it the first thing we read is the account number, then the name, then the address, then the balance. If we get those wrong, we'll have a corrupting loader, which brings in all kinds of rubbish and may even crash. Uh, like I said, XML is good because in XML you have each of these guys will be labelled. Uh, you give each of them a name. Um, that's fine. It's probably a bit slower. Um, it's worth exploring in your own time, but for now, are you kind of okay with this? We've got this file and that's one account's worth of data. Uh, as four lines of text. Now, I want to load it back. And loading is... It's funny how things keep coming back, isn't it? The word static keeps appearing in the last two weeks. <laughs> static, planet, Jupiter, whatever. Um, so, we can't ask an account to load itself. We can ask an account to save itself because it's there and it'll do what you tell it. Well, we can't ask it to load itself because it isn't there. We can't say to the account, hey, fetch yourself from that disk, please. There is no account to fetch. So the method that fetches the account has to be a static one, which means it is always present, because I keep on about this, um, because I'm really determined that you shall know. If you go for a job with Google or Apple, or they'll give you a coding test, and they'll ask you questions like, what does static mean? And if you don't know the answer, you won't get the job. Uh, and, and so it goes. So, yeah, this is, this is uh, quite important. So static means it's always there, it's part of the class, we can use it without having an instance, and that's what we want. So here is my load. It's static, it returns an account that it has loaded. Uh, we give it a text reader, a stream that lets us read stuff, and this is the important bit. These guys are in exactly the same order as the ones that wrote them. Otherwise, it's all going to go horribly wrong, Gromit. What will happen is we'll get all kinds of, of, of bad stuff happening. So the first thing we wrote was the account number. The first thing we read is the account number. Calling an input device a stream is a good name because it really is a stream. You just pull things off it in the order that they were written. And so that means that I can bring in the four bits of information as strings, bang, 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 bang. I then have to convert the balance, which came in as a piece of text, into a number because the account wants to store an account number and then I can make a new account with the text, the address, the balance and the account number and return it. So there you go, six lines of code to read an account. And all that does is you give it a stream, it calls the read methods on these guys and brings them all in Then it converts the one that has to be a number into a number and then it makes an account out of it. So. What's not to like? If, they, if the file is corrupt, if this line doesn't contain a number, what will happen? Anything nice involving unicorns and kittens? No, it'll blow up, which is fine. I don't care about that. It means that we couldn't, someone's given me a stupid file, I'll therefore explode, QED, problem solved. So yeah, that's fine. If it fails, we get an exception. I'm perfectly good with that because uh, if they use it as stupid things, they deserve to have bad things happen to them. Uh, end of. Uh, so does that make sense to book? Not too hard, I don't think. That's good. So, to read the account, we have to do the open, read and close routine. And maybe we have to deal with exceptions that might be thrown and make sure that our file is closed. Now, we've seen the pattern for this before. Here's the one that does the reading. Uh, again, static method returns an account has the name load, gets a file name. This one, there's my result, there's my text reader, make the text reader, set the result to the thing we're loading. If it blows up, well, Q 
catch the exception and re-throw it, and make sure that finally runs to close the input file if it hasn't already been closed. What's not to like? That's it. So that will load an account for me. Just those simple bits of code. The heavy lifting is done by this method, which is called through from here. Both methods are static, so they're both part of the class. Remember that a static thing can only touch other static things. And this guy returns the account, it's just loaded. And here you go, this is the kind of thing which I can do, make an account for Rob in Hull with 100 quid, save it in a file called test.txt, then make an account called Rob Copy, which is produced by loading that. We now have two objects, one called Rob and one called Rob Copy, and they should contain exactly the same data, because one went into the file and one came out. Um, what you'll be doing in the lab is then testing to see if Rob and Rob Copy are the same thing. And to do that, you will need an equals method on the account class, which you're also going to build. Does that make sense? So now I can, if I've got the equals method, and it's a good equals method, I can actually test to see whether what comes back is what I wrote. The kind of errors I'm looking for are if I get these guys the wrong way around. If I get name and address swapped over in the load method, I'll get people called Hull who live at Rob Miles, which is technically not correct. Won't cause the program to crash because they're both strings. But can you see how that could be an issue that you might want to pick up? So that's why I'm doing it. I mean, when I'm writing the code, I effectively just uh, um, keep the lines very close together and be very, very careful not, not to get them the wrong way around. Otherwise, yet yeah, bad things will happen. But my test here would pick it up. So yes, bottom bullet point. If I had a working equals method, I could compare these two guys to see if they are the same. And if they're different, then I have to go back and rework my load or my save because one of them is getting it wrong. Questions? Is that okay? And this is a way to do it. There are other ways involving JSON and XML, but I quite like this. It's a good way of learning how to plumb things together. I would farm out the account development to somebody else, or I'd write it as a completely sort of freestanding thing. Accounts can exist on their own, although it's unlikely we'd ever do that, and we can test them on their own. So we can completely and utterly test out the behavior of the account and make sure it's a good account before we put it in the bank, because we have that ability. We can use equals to compare things, and we can load it, and we can save it individually, and that's all good. Now we're gonna save a bank. Now it gets interesting. So the bank is just like the account, except it holds a bunch of accounts. And so we'll have to basically ask the bank to save itself. Um, we need to see how many accounts are being saved. Uh, we have to save that, because when the bank reads itself back, it has to know how many accounts to read. Uh, and we may have to store the uh, latest account numbers so we can actually make accounts uh, with numbers that continue as well. So this is... It all sounds really complicated and, and, and high blown and whatnot. It's actually, was it seven lines of code? Eight lines of code? Take away the curly brackets. Put that up there, can do. That's five lines? Yeah, tiny. Write the bank name. Out that goes, friendly bank, whatever. Write the new account number. So when I make a new account, I can carry from where I left off. Write how many accounts I've got in my dictionary. That's what count does. It says there are so many entries in the dictionary. And then, for each account in the accounts, ask it to save itself. I love this code. It's brilliant. I'm using a stream, remember? This guy. So, the first thing that goes out on the stream is the name, followed by the new account number, followed by the account and bank accounts, followed by each of the accounts. There's actually an error on this slide. I apologise. That should say bank accounts dot values, because in a dictionary you have to ask that it should give me all the values of the things in there, not the actual uh, um, other bits. So yeah, I'll fix that and put it back up again later on today. But the cunning bit, the really clever bit, is this guy here. The bank doesn't save the accounts; they all save themselves. 
And the save method for the bank looks exactly like the save method for the account, doesn't it? It's just the same. They take a stream and they do their stuff. Does that make sense? I want to see it going. Yes, of course you do. Why would you not? So I go back to Visual Studio and my lovely account manager program. And if I go and have a look in my, oh, look, it's at the bank load method. Who'd have thought? Let's go find the bank's bank save method, which will be up one, or maybe two, or maybe three. Here we go. So, yeah, there's that values thing I mentioned. So, if I were to break point here, and I fire my program up, my program wakes up and makes, I think it's 100, or it might be 1,000 test accounts. So, if I hit save, bang, then we're writing out to my text out stream. The bank is called test bank, and so I write that out. Then I write out the new account number, which is one. That's a bit low. Okay, not writing many accounts then, looks like. <laughs> Maybe I should add some accounts in a moment. We'll do that in a second. Step over there. What's the count? Oh, it's 100. Oh, that's odd. And I know why, because I made a mistake. Never happens. Moving on. No one saw that, Rob, but okay. So I've got 100 to write out. So now I go step into, get the account, call save. Out goes the account number, the name and the balance, and then round we go again. Dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. So all these guys go out there. We close the thing at the end. I'll just hit run to finish it off. Bank saved. Now there is a bug in this code. Ooh, how embarrassing. Uh, oh, that's easy to read. Can, oh, is it better on here? That's awful. Sorry. It's, yeah, okay. Go in here. Go in here. Go in here. Go in there. It's a debug. There's bank. Right, let's open bank and have a look. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can see it. Format, font, make it enormous, that'll do. So, test bank. New account number, that should be 101. I've made a mistake there. But there's 100 accounts. There's dit, who's account number one with a balance of zero. There's repos, with an account balance of whatever. So they're just 100, they're all, there, all out there, look. All the way down to the bottom. So. That's my header, that's my account holders. Bang, just done it. The lovely thing about this is that it's beautifully bendy. If I decide that account holders need address, say, an address would be a good thing to do, and if I make a class called address to hold the address information, say, that could contain the first line of the address, the second line of the address, the county and the postcode, say, as four strings. I could put the address item inside the account and give it the same save and load behaviours that we know and love already. And then inside the account, I would call save on my address item and it will get pushed out in the appropriate place. When I load it back, I'll load it back, and it all comes out in the wash. I'm very tempted to actually just do that. Can we do that? Just for the hell of it? Why not? Let's, 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 let's give these folks a dress. So what we do, kill that. Nothing, nothing like coding in an... Uh, nothing like uh, dodgy coding with an audience at speed. How do I do this? What's my starting point? You can do all the heavy lifting. What's the first thing I do? Make an excuse and leave. Run for the hills. Tell you my favourite joke in all the world. You've heard it already, so that's not really. In the of the world, the horse walks into a bar and the barman says, Why the long stay? I thank you. <laughs> the other one is, uh, what's red and not there? No tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit profound, that one. Um, yeah, okay. I do like it, though. What's the other one? Yes, sir. What, what orange in Sounds like a parrot. A parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Sound of... Yeah. There's these two fish in a tank, and one says, how do you drive this? Um, yeah, so... <laughs> what, 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 
Yep, I'm here all week. What's the first thing I do? I add an account class. So I add an address class. So we go in here, we go, put a bit of down. Go into here, we go add, and then we go class. And I'm adding this to my project. It's going to be called uh, address. Now, just a question for you before we go any further. Why didn't I just put the first the address lines of text in the account class? Why didn't I just give an account and a, 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 a postcode and a, a first line? Why didn't I do that? Because your address can change depending on your location. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Because I can use the address for other things. The bank branches might have addresses. The customer might have two addresses. It might have a home uh, address and a work address. Um, so if I make the address class, I can use it anywhere to store an address. So let's just let's just build this thing up. So let's put in here uh, string first line. Public or private? Private, yeah. And then in here I'll have a thing called public get first line. Now the reason I'm doing this, this will be a string I should think as well, uh, and we'll go Then I'll get upset and think that should really start with a, um, a lowercase f. So I'll rename it to, I do love doing this, to first line. So now it's called first line, which is quite cute. And then in here, I can then actually go uh, public. Uh, I should do this. Oh, yeah. OK, let's, 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 let's go hardcore. Void set first. line string new line I'm gonna be here for a week now whose idea was this so now I go um, well since I'm being really hardcore I'm doing it properly because I want to get paid big money I'm gonna go static check um, I'll call it bool and then I'll go What other what business rules would I have about the first line of my address? What can it not have? Well, no, we, po postcodes are. I'm going to have something like if you wanted to get to this to this place, you could go the University of Hull, HU6, 7RX. That would get you here, like that. So, first line is University of Hull, and I'm going to be I'm going to be cheap. I'm going to do the first line of postcode and nothing else because I'm lazy. Okay. So, what do we? What would constitute a bad first line of address? Nothing. Nothing. I like. So we go if new line uh, equals equals boom. -bum. What do I do? False. Else. True. So if we get a nice line with of text, then we're good. So that's my test. So. I've basically got three things now. I've got a checker, which is a static method. I've got a setter, which is this guy here. And I've got a getter, which is this guy here. So in here, I would go something like if check if uh, first line OK. Now, there's better ways of doing this, but oh, gosh, that didn't work at all. Um, ah, go away. First line OK. New line. Okay, if the line's okay, then I go back here and I go, I'm being nasty. I'll do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm really cross. Otherwise, I go, okay, so. I've got me an I've got me an address with 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 a, with a first line that's absolutely bomb-proof. I love that code. You can build that out. So now what I do because it's because I'm I'm uh, in a hurry. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Control C, Control V, block copy as far as there. Edit, 
search and replace where is it find and replace here we go quick replace replace all my first line with oh you're not doing it in the current document are you idiot just want it in the selection there first line with postcode now I've got to go reselect it again because you're an idiot da -da -da -da. So I've got that. By the time I've finished this, it would have been easy to type it, but I don't care about that. Bam. That's it. <sighs> Stinks to be me, isn't it? I could give up on that one and do it properly the second time. So then under here now. I'm very good with undo me, because I have to be. Bang. So now I've got postcode. Yeah, that's more like it. Six will do. So now I've got postcode and first line in there and something weird happening. For, why, are you, why are you complaining? Oh, I've got two of them. Oh. Right, okay, finally. Right, so I've got a postcode. <sighs> that sucks to be me. I've got a postcode and a first line in there and they are both okay right okay so I can set the code and I can set the first line I can do all that blah anything else I should do probably go home no that's not good uh, no constructor yeah I think so what do I give the constructor Let's go like that. And then I go if. What's going to happen now? If not, first line. Okay. No, hang on. No, just do, just do it the hardcore way. Easy enough. Just do it this way. We go like this. We go um, set first line, first line. And then we go set postcode, postcode. What happens if I give him valid ones of these guys? He'll blow up. Good, like that, that's good. So that's how I make my addresses, and that means that I can now put my address into things. Um, so I now have to... What happens next? Come on. And we've got another 25 minutes to save the Earth, Flash, or whatever. Movie reference. I could do that. Where's he going to live? Well, let's do let's do the save function. Let's do some more. Don't try this at home. So I go see the account, and I get hold of his save, and I get hold of his load, like this. This is very very naughty. I do that. And I go back into here. Uh, no, but back into here. I always used to do that. Go into address. Drop these guys in. Okay, so bang, they're all there. The, the, the actual load command does not have to change for this guy. Just has to change for this guy. Because I've got two of them. I've got postcode and first line. So inside here, the save command will be complaining at me, I would have thought. Were well, you moaning? Yes, I thought you might be. So I'm going to have to go postcode. And I'm going to have to go... No, do first line first. First line. And then postcode. That's my save done. No such thing as balance. That can go. Bang. When I read it back... First line. Postcode, postcode, code. Uh, these guys, yep, whatever, boom, boom, boom. And then here, I'm going to change you to return an address. And I'm going to change you to return an address. And in here, I'm going to give you first line. And then I'm going to give you postcode. 
top one, yeah, thank you. And then I'm not balance line, I don't know if it doesn't exist. Anything else I need to do? That guy still works. He should probably be an address. And he should probably be an address. And then he should, there we go. Da, 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 da. Yeah, because I call load, that all works. That returns an address. Any errors? No. Damn, I'm good. Right, that's it. That's the account class sorted. Brilliant, eh? Now what? What happens now? Who gets the address? The account. The account does. Okay, so let's go in the account uh, account class and let's give the account class an address. Yay! So in here. Let's ignore those guys. Let's go in here and just go. Is it private or public? Is the address property private or public? What's the difference? Yep. Yeah. So we're going to go and make it private. Do you think? Here's the thing. Do we want to know if the customer changes his address? Yes. We're thinking that we probably do. So we might, we might need to make it private. Do you mind if I make it public just for now? So it makes the code quicker. Of course you don't. So there you go. It's called address. It's public. Why? Oh, I've got a string already. Oh, it's inconsistent. Yes. If a thing inside the class is public, that means the class itself needs to be public, and I forgot to put the word public up here. Oh, no, I haven't. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, I know why. Address isn't public. Hee. Okay, so the account's got an address. Just for simplicity's sake, let's just uh, make sure that it's... A so when I make my new account, I'm also going to do another massive cheat. Here we go. You'll like this. Um, go into the address, and whenever we construct an address, so go to the account, and whenever we construct an account, we'll just lob up an address in there for now. Let's go into here, and make, when we make a test account, we'll go address uh, so yeah. This is my account constructor, one of them, which calls through to this guy. So the master constructor is this guy. This is the guy that is used to construct every single account. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go address equals new address, and I'm going to go uh, in names in name plus. house <laughs> code and then I'm going to go postcode any one four ten s which is my favorite postcode in all the world uh, which I hope exists I should say 10 not shriek so this is a massive cheap it means that everybody gets an address which is kind of that thing okay you still trust me I'll put all this code up after today um, with a straight face. So, whenever I make an account, the address gets set. You can put the UI in to do all that, uh, and uh, absolutely you should think about doing that. What you should have is a button mark edit address, I guess, that pulls the address up into the form and lets you work on it. But for now, I can run the program and it'll put a whole bunch of accounts in there with addresses. Now I have to do the save and the load, and this is the easy bit. This is my account load, and this is my account save. And so all I have to do is this. I go address.save, text out. It's 
it's weird. I've done all this horrible heavy lifting. So what happens now is you write out the name, the account number, the name, the balance, and the address. Don't we? So now we'll have an extra two lines appearing in our information about the account holder, which will be the postcode and the address. And then when I do a load in here, I'll go string address oh, but first first line equals text in no I'll do it I'll do it the easy way. What am I doing this for? What am I doing this for? Money? I yeah <laughs> yeah money not many money. I can now go Oh, bum, I have to make... Oh, no, it's okay. okay. This is a horrible cheat. Let's do it this way. Poo. I have to go back here, don't I? Ah. Ah, dear. I have to tell the account the new address. Oh, let's just cheat. It's a good thing this isn't being recorded, isn't it? Recording. Everyone's recording it. I'm gonna oh damn. Copy that, paste it here. So let's read in the let's set the result equal to those bits and then I'm gonna go result dot address equals address dot load text in. So go off and get me the, and then just return result. That's horrible, but in the time, it's fine. Okay. So make my account, then whack the address on the end, which I've read from that file. This will work. Run the program. What could go wrong? Hit save. Bam. Hits the breakpoint. Don't care about that. Let it run on. Okay. It's worked. Okay, go and have a look in the bank and so now it's not put his house in why no house what have we done come on there's a piece of cheese in this the first person to spot it what am I not writing out correctly there's address I'm getting there's his first line there's his first line I must be setting it wrong. New address in names house. So let's go have a look at this. Set line for oh, let's put a breakpoint here for giggles. Run the program. This is good, this is fun, isn't it? <laughs> Pardon? Is it Oh, buffoon. Yeah, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, my mistake. Should be a little L. I need to work on my coding conventions. Should be a little L. First. <laughs> oh! But just copy that and paste it there. Like that. Okay, it'll work now. Perfect. We're so happy. Let's sing a happy song. I do that a lot, actually. Um, but it doesn't seem to work too well. Hit save. Bank saved. Go and have a look. Is it going to work? There you go. So that's pushed his name. Um, these guys here were written by the address. This thing here was written by the account. And the whole thing was written by the bank. And they all kind of fit inside of my little Russian dolls. And they all do their bit and hand it back. Shall I press load? <laughs> I've got to press load. You won't believe me. I hit load. And it thinks it's loaded okay. I'll take that to the bank. Uh -huh. Do save again. Just just to make sure. Because if it's, if it's come back different. No, it's working all right. Now, in real life, you'd probably spend more than 20 minutes on this. Uh, in real life. At least, yeah, at least 25, absolutely. Um, but have you got the principle... I've made a new object, I've shoved it inside an existing object, I've given it a save behaviour and a load behaviour, and the existing object just uses that. 
So now, if we have a home address and an away address, we just call that twice to load it and twice to save it. We have this principle that I use this streamy thing, which I pass into the save, and that does the heavy lifting for me, and I have no idea how it works. It just does. And that's the wrapper class for a wrapper method that saves the entire thing. And it's exactly my save method for the account, the address, and the bank are all the same code. Exactly the same code. Because all of them make a text writer called the save that accepts a stream and then do all the other stuff. That's all the same code. So that's my, my saver. Write the name, write the account number, write the account of how many account banks we've got. Oh, the word values is in the right place here. That's fine. Write out each one. Um, and the account just saves itself. So, yeah, go. We've actually answered that question in the thing. How do we have to change the bank if the account design changes? Answer? We don't. Because the account does all the same and loan and the bank just whacks it out there. So if we add pictures to our account holders, if we add encryption to the account data, we do all that kind of, it doesn't matter. The bank just calls the save and the loan to put it out there and bring it back on that stream. If someone tampers with the content of the files in loading and saving, this is a kind of like a mild worry. Um, we can't stop tampering. As soon as the file leaves the stream, once we've handed the thing over, once we want to close the stream, we lose control. So I could go into here. Let's make Dit a rich person. Let's go into bank here and get hold of Dit's balance, which is presently zero, I think. Which of those is his balance? That one or that one? This one here? Do them both. Yeah, why not? Let's give Dit an awful lot of money and then just save that back. Think it'll work? Yeah. Save. What's the worst that could happen? Absolutely. Now hit, yeah, now hit load. Load. Yeah. Now go and see if we can find the count number one, which is DIT. And look how much money he's got. Ooh, that's not good, is it? Uh, so, you see the blockchain, that's working really well for, uh, for Bitcoin, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Anybody got, anybody got any Bitcoin? <laughs> Really? Just Four one? <laughs> How's it going at the moment? I have like 230,000 Dogecoin. Oh, that, that's good. Um, a few years ago... It's worth like 60 bucks. <laughs> a few years ago, some of our students were going to buy some uh, enormous graphics cards and, and some high-performance cooling and try and do Bitcoin mining. Uh, and uh, I told them it wasn't going to end well, and I was a bit, didn't even start with it. Luck. It was, uh, yeah. Uh, the time to get... Mining bitcoins is about oh, five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Too late. So, back to the plot. Yeah. Um, we can fiddle with this, and uh, that's not good. What I would do in real life is I'd have like a checksum or some kind of magic number I'd calculate and put on the end of the account information so that when I load it back, if my checksum's been broken, it means it's been tampered with. That wouldn't stop people from finding this file and actually see how much money Dit's got. So maybe I'd encrypt the whole damn thing and whack it out as an enormous serial piece of guacamole, which I would then decrypt. But as far as the bank is concerned, the bank doesn't care. The bank class just says to the account, hey, save yourself. And bang, it just puts itself on the screen. And same for the bank. I could do this in XML. I could use JSON. I could use what I like. And as far as the bank is concerned, it doesn't matter. And I'm really quite keen on that. So. We can build in the behaviours to stop tampering. We can make sure that when the file comes back in again, we check it. And in real life, that's exactly what they do. Um, if I wanted to, if I had lots and lots... Say I did this bank thing for every single branch in the country. So a, a bank is actually a physical branch somewhere in, in the UK. I could have 500 or so banks and a bank collection object that holds all the banks. If I do that... I just scale up my routine. I give the bank collection the save behavior that spins for every single bank and saves that, and the bank then spins and saves all the accounts, and the accounts save their addresses, and wow, it just works. 
which I think is really sweet. And it, it brings home to you lot the neatness of giving each object its own thing to look after and passing it just the safe stream to put itself on. If I want to send a, a bank to somebody else, I can change that stream that points to a file to a stream that points to a network connection and just push it out that way. Bang, off it goes. So this is quite a nice way to do it. If you know, I put the versioning in, then I can make a thing that's effectively future-proof and bomb-proof, and away we go. So yeah, I'm quite keen on this. So, load and save, good things. <coughs> save to a stream and to a file. Technically, we don't need to save an account to a file because the bank does that. So it's possible you could dis disappear all the file save stuff, apart from perhaps the bank, which saves the whole thing at the end. Uh, it's best if you leave error handling to the method that calls you by perpetuating exceptions and causing it to blow up. And please don't leave open files. Be, be a, a good citizen in that respect as well. So yeah, I will actually zip this up and slap it on the interwebs so you can look at how much dodgy code you can write in 25 minutes. But I hope the principles got through that it's now we're kind of jumping up and down these levels and, and making things uh, self-sufficient. The next thing you do is actually, the one thing that Robert does next, which is really, really cool, is you take a bank or whatever and you bind it to a page, which is its editing area, which is quite cute. But more of that a little bit later. Uh, good luck with the lab on Thursday, and uh, I'll see you folks in tutorials.